the fourteenth year of Qingzhou. Chapter 27 Moving in with the Jinyue Beihu Sui Zhou's residence was a small, three-courtyard property. If one were to live there with a big family, it would be crowded but if it was to house a single person like Sui Zhou as it currently did, it was quite spacious. The addition of Tang Fan would not make much of a difference. There were three main rooms and three side rooms. Sui Zhou occupied one of the main rooms and its side room was being used to storing miscellaneous items. The other two main rooms and side rooms were all free for Tang Fan to choose from. It had to be noted that it would be free of rent. Tang Fan had never thought to eat or stay somewhere for free but Sui Zhou was not in need of rent money. Even if Tang Fan didn't stay there, Sui Zhou would still be living alone in such a spacious residence like this one. Since General Sui Beihu said he would not accept a single coin as rent with a stony expression, Master Tang didn't insist. However, since he was going to stay there for free, he insisted on buying rice, noodles, and other food supply into the house which was tantamount to him paying for their food. Sui Zhou didn't have any objection with this. Tang Fan chose one of the side rooms as his own. That wasn't because he was being polite nor embarrassed to use one of the main rooms. It was because the room was facing east and open to the courtyard. It had plenty of natural light so he could plant flowers and other plants in the courtyard and under the colonnade when he has free time. After finding a day to take off from work, Tang Fan moved his things over. Li Lin was surprised to find that he had nothing to hold over Tang Fan anymore since the other had found another place to live in so quickly. The issue with Ah Dong was settled as quickly as well. Tang Fan felt it wasn't right for him to overstep in this but Sui Zhou did not have any scruples. He didn't even have to show his face. People from the Northern Administrative Court Division went to the Li residence and declared that they were there concerning Li Man's case and that they were going to take a group of people for questioning. Ah Chun, Ah Chiu, Ah Dong and other servants were taken to go with the Jin Yue men. They would be released back only to be taken away again. After a few rounds of this, the Li family couldn't take it anymore. Lao Li pulled the Jin Yue and begged them to give the family a break while surreptitiously handling some silver tails to them but it didn't work. In the end, the Li family had to offer the slave contract with both hands of not only Ah Dong but Ah Chun as well. With Lady Zhang gone, Ah Chun no longer wished to stay with the Li family. Her biggest wish was to gain her freedom and to properly marry. Before Li Lin wanted her to be his concubine. She was unwilling but unable to do anything about it. Tang Fan was a good man who did right by her in the end. In his resolve to save Ah Dong, he incidentally saved Ah Chun as well. Ah Chiu was willing to stay with the Li family and so she was left to be. In three days time, all of these were done and dealt with making Tang Fan sigh with how wonderfully efficient the Jin Yue truly was to be able to accomplish something no ordinary people could do. No wonder people's expression changed when they heard the word Jin Yue. Ah Dong had been sold into the Li family since she was very young. After leaving them, she had nowhere to go aside from Tang Fan. However, instead of accepting the slave contract, Tang Fan burned it right in front of Ah Dong. He told her that everything was fine as he would just accept her as an adopted sister. He would shelter her until she came of age at 15 and would not force her to stay if she wanted to go and get married. When that time came, he would naturally prepare some sort of a dowry for her and find her a good family to marry into. Ah Dong was of course very enthusiastic about this and immediately started calling him Gig. As a slave, she did not have a last name but now she was given one. From then on, she would thus be called Tang Dong. In the house, there were only two grown men who left in the morning and came back at night so there was no one who could do the household chores except for a temporary worker who was hired to do it every now and then. Moreover, even if Sui Zhou could cook, it was not possible for him to do it every single day. After Ah Dong's arrival, there was no need for a temporary worker to be hired since Ah Dong had assumed the house works on her own initiative. The cooking could be done by her as well. Though young and somewhat of a glutton, the playful Ah Dong was very agile and work fast. In a span of a few days, 
the house gleamed both inside and outside as if it was new. She had also planted a lot of flowers and shrubs in the courtyard to which both Suizhou and Tang Fan expressed how pleased they were with it. Master Tang from there on lived a blessed life of not having to worry about cleaning and cooking. The whereabouts of Lady Chen, a woman who was probably related to the White Lotus Society, were still being traced, but Pandaren was all sorts of anxious for a different reason. Although the White Jade Horse's whereabouts were now known, Wang Ji had still given Pan Bin a difficult problem. The White Jade Horse was obviously at Shang Ming's house but Wang Ji had said that it was his property which had been lost, how could Pan Bin tell him the truth? What if Wang Ji said that Shang Ming's White Jade Horse is not his but was exactly like that? Where could Pan Bin get him an exact replica of that one? He had been suspecting that Wang Ji was deliberately trying to mess with him but when he went to inquire further about it afterwards, he discovered that it was not that way at all. All this while, the Eastern Depot had stolen two ideas from the Western Depot which ruthlessly changed the way the wind blew in terms of the Emperor's favor. After Wang Ji came out to run the Western Depot, his relationship with the Noble Consort Wan had become estranged, and the Noble Consort Wan has stopped putting in words to the Emperor on his behalf. Without the help of this pillow talk, Wang Ji was rapidly being suppressed by Shang Ming. The news that Pan Bin was helping Wang Ji find the White Jade Horse would eventually be known to Shang Ming which would definitely make him angry and made him exclaim such things as, what's the meaning of this? It's clearly mine. Claiming that you lost it implicates that I stole it. Wang Ji after all, was less than 20 years of age. He had the impetuousness of youth, not as mature as those eunuchs in the palace who have endured decades of palace intrigue. That he could come up with this idea to annoy Shang Ming was not surprising. The two eunuchs fighting over favor was originally had nothing to do with the Shuntian prefecture. Wang Ji created such a fuss which also dragged Pan Bin into the water. Shang Ming would definitely hate Wang Ji but he would hold a grudge against Pan Bin, too. Thinking about it, Pan Bin was as bitter as if he had eaten a piece of yellow cabbage in the cold winter. He was feeling very miserable thinking to himself, who did I mess with? I finally made it to the true third rank position after working so hard not to offend anyone of note. I was just sitting on my house when disaster came down from the heavens. If I had known this earlier, then it would have been better if I had remained a fourth rank prefectural prefect. At least then the emperor and the heavens would be far away and I could be comfortable without getting involved in such stupid things. Unfortunately, it's too late to make these complaints. The best way forward would be to not offend anyone and just expose the whole matter then let those blasted eunuchs fight off each other however they like. It would be best for the Shuntian prefecture not to get drawn into it. But, is it easy to find a method that went both ways? Pan Bin thought about it for half a day and still couldn't think of any good way to go about this. Could he tell Wang Ji that they couldn't find the white jade horse? That would not do. Wang Ji wouldn't probably submit a memorial denouncing him for being incompetent and couldn't complete a task. Could he tell Wang Ji that his white jade horse was in Shang Ming's house? That would not do either as it would pretty much offend Shang Ming. Could he tell Wang Ji to stop messing with him and that if he found Shang Ming to be an eyesore, just go to him already and fight it off to the death without involving him as the Shuntian Prefect Magistrate. That would do even less. Bluntness was not appreciated in politics. When the time came, Wang Ji would pass the blame onto him and by that time, it would be impossible for him to get away from it. Pan Bin's hair had turned white from worry. Then, he remembered his junior disciple brother. When he had brought Tang Fan over that dinner engagement, Wang Ji seemed to have a good impression of him. Maybe it's something that could be abused. Pan Bin went to find Tang Fan and when he did, he implored him earnestly, Runking, with your senior disciple brother in the Shuntian prefecture, I can take better care of you. If I get demoted or banished to another post and your superior became someone else, you'll have to be more careful and would only have your own self to rely on. Tang Fan smiled bitterly. He knew that Pan Bin was talking around like this to gain his sympathy so instead of letting the drivel went on, he bluntly said, 
Brother, if you need anything, just give a command. Pan Ben said, It's nothing much, just about that white jade horse. Wang Ji made it clear that he was deliberately making things difficult on purpose. No matter which response I give, it will not be appropriate and offending him was only a matter of course. Tang Fan mused for a moment then said, Actually, it's not like there's completely no way out of this. It just depends on whether senior brother has the courage to say so. Pan Ben was overjoyed as he said, What a good brother you are. I know you're resourceful. If you have any ideas, tell me quickly. One day later, in Xianyun restaurant, at the same private room, Wang Ji was seated at the table looking across Pan Bin with a mocking smile on his face, for Master Pan to come and seek me out himself, I could only presume that you have found my white jade horse. Pan Bin cussed this damned eunuch and fucking schemer in his heart for a hundred times. Outwardly though, he maintained an earnest smile on his face and said, I'm not hiding it from eunuch Wang, the white jade horse is not found yet. Wang Ji raised his eyebrows and asked, Then why did you call me here for? Is Master Pan messing with me on purpose? Pan Ben replied, Don't be hasty, eunuch Wang. Aren't you being a little restless? Do listen to what this humble official has to say for now. When I inquire around, there was actually a white jade horse that looks very similar to what you were looking for in the residence of Chief Eunuch Shang. I know for a fact that he was very fond of it and will probably refuse to part from it. For Eunuch Wang though, the white jade horse was a secondary matter. After all you have an even bigger crisis on your hand. Wang Ji sneered and said, such exaggerated talk. Isn't Master Pan just trying to escape responsibility? Pan Ben shook his head and replied, not at all. You have His Majesty's confidence nowadays and currently in charge of the Western Depot. It might seem like adding flowers to an already beautiful bouquet but in reality, it was like adding oil to an already raging inferno. I heard that Eunuch Wang's success in gaining His Majesty's attention is due to the recommendation of the Noble Consort Wan on top of your own ability and efficiency. But now, you are in control of the Western Depot and are involved in external affairs while Noble Consort Wan was a woman inside the Imperial Harem. It would be no good for her to show too much interest in such things making it difficult for her to put in a good word for you. On His Majesty's side is Shang Ming who had been following His Majesty for many years. In comparison to you, he was a bit closer to His Majesty. If Shang Ming makes up some false charges in front of His Majesty against you, you won't escape suffering losses. Wang Ji's heart was jolted as Pan Bin's words hit the nail on the head. Why did he want to seize power so badly and why did he want to expand his power and suppress Shang Ming after the establishment of the Western Depot? It was exactly because he knew that he was not as favored as Shang Ming. So, he had to consolidate his position in the Emperor's mind by making more achievements. That was something that Consort Wang could not help him with being a woman of the Imperial Harem. Only Wang Ji could make the effort by himself. What effort should he exert exactly? Wang Ji could not think of any other method than this. The territory of the Imperial Capital was already divided between the Eastern Depot and the Jinyue, so he could only snatch food from both their mouths and compete with Shang Ming for favor but it was a fact that the Western Depot had only been established for two years and could not compare with the Eastern Depot and the Jinyue, who were both long-established intelligence agencies with lengthy histories and plenty of clout. Meanwhile, the Emperor had established the Western Depot on a whim. So, Wang Ji could only act more aggressively and established more credit. Only then could he completely consolidate his position and win the trust of the emperor to climb the apex of life from there on and remain standing tall. With the increasing pressure of competition. Everyone in the capital is doing their best to win favor. And thus, eunuch Wang's pressure was also growing with each passing day. Wang Ji looked at Pan Bin and said, So what should I do according to Master Pan's point of view? Pan Bin was in no rush to reply. He dipped one finger into his wine and wrote four words on the top of the mahogany table. Military merits, East Palace. Wang Ji, among many eunuchs that grasped great authority, 
was a somewhat of unusual character. He was not an impulsive person. He understood who he could afford to offend and who he couldn't. He knew how to win the emperor's approval. But because of his youthful arrogance and how he loved to show off, he came up with this idea of asking Pan Bin's help to look for that white jade horse. Something that would mock someone else but did no favors for himself, personally. It was simply to embarrass Shang Ming. However, this kind of step could easily earn him powerful enemies, like right now. Pan Bin had scolded him a couple of hundred times in his mind and dare not do anything else. On top of that, Wang Ji also liked to get involved in military matters despite the fact that he has no proficiency in them. He just liked the thought of being able to ride the frontier like the famous generals of olden days who have left their mark on history. Envisioning himself galloping across the borderlands while laying unparalleled military merits made eunuch Wang felt hot-blooded, as if he never lacked any manly parts. Due to this, Pan Bin citing military merit was very understandable as it was exactly what he wanted. Wang Ji was finally interested in this topic. Although, the last two words were a bit strange. So, Wang Ji asked, what do you mean by East Palace? We subjects dare not rashly comment on the matters of the inner palace, but I have heard that the crown prince of the eastern palace is very studious and diligent. All the ministers say that he has the appearance of a wise ruler. In these days, it was fashionable to say words with hidden meanings and not to provide clarity in order to deliberately make the other person guess what exactly the other was trying to say. This is so that no matter what happened afterwards, there would be a way out. Some even put on an air of pretentiousness in order to show such art of speech. Wang Ji puzzled over the meaning of Pan Bin's words, trying to determine if he was indeed indicating that he should support the crowned prince. Because the whole realm knew that the noble consort Wan and the crowned prince did not get along. Noble consort Wan found nothing pleasing about him and was even planning to convince the emperor to eradicate him. Wang Ji himself was promoted by noble consort Wan. If he supported the crowned prince, noble consort Wan would definitely get angry. If that happened, wouldn't that be the end of his position in the western depot? So, he shook his head, thinking that Pan Bin had come up with a bad idea. He then said to mock him, Master Pan, as the Shuntian prefecture magistrate, he should just take care of the area within the capital and its outskirts instead of talking about matters he did not understand. If you don't know the situation within the court, you shouldn't comment wildly about it. Pan Bin sighed and said, Eunuch Wang has misunderstood. I have to let Eunuch Wang know the importance of picking a side. The realm has a long-lived emperor but is there such a thing as long-lived consort? Eunuch Wang should not only think of the present but think of the future as well. If there is a chance to make a good fortune, there may be one more way out in the future. Either advancing or retreating, the right move has to be done suitably. Wang Ji hadn't been taking Pan Bin's words seriously but after hearing his explanation, he began to think deeply. Pan Bin was right. Although the crown prince might not be able to become the emperor in the future, he was currently well regarded by many people. Some people even said that he would be a better ruler than his father in the future. Wang Ji himself was still young and needed to have some plans for the future. If he could find an opportunity to secure a good future through the crown prince, maybe those civil officials won't try to make trouble for him in the future or look at him in a bad light. Having understood the gist of it, Wang Ji finally said, in view of Master Pan's considerate words, let's drop the matter of the white jade horse for now. I lost it so it's lost and I don't care to find it anymore. Having finally heard those words, Pan Bin couldn't help but gave a sigh of relief. Wang Ji looked at him with shallow smile and said, with Master Pan's personality, you don't seem to be someone who could come up with such an idea. Is it from that junior disciple brother of yours? The annoying eunuch was right on the money. Pan Bin chuckled to cover his embarrassment and said, it wasn't like that at all. Wang Ji lamented, your junior disciple brother is really a talented man. Although his post was not high, he has good and rare insights. 
it's a shame that there was no precedent for a civil official entering the depots otherwise I would have definitely taken him to be one of my closest assistants. Han Bin. Dear ancestors, thank you for my junior disciple brother. Truly, thank you. Master Pen resolved the headache about the white jade horse and was finally relieved. Over at Master Tang's end, he was extraordinarily pleased with his current living arrangements. He brought plenty of seeds for the flowers and fruits to plant in the courtyard and left them to Adong to take care of. Some of the plants he brought were already blooming with flowers. In a short amount of time, the previously vacant courtyard became filled with multitude of vibrant colors. It gave a sense that the whole courtyard had come to life in an instant. Although Master Tang's cooking skill was lacking, he had gathered a lot of recipes from outside and used them in the pretense of teaching Adong how to improve her cooking skills. During one of his rest day, he took advantage of when she was cooking while he had nothing better to do and started reading a recipe to her out loud, sweep felled plum florals, bath clean. Using snow water, cook white kanji. Wait for the... Adong couldn't help but cover her ears and wailed, Gee, I am not a scholar. I don't understand anything about what you're reading. Master Tang played innocent and asked, Is it really hard to understand? Come, I'll teach you what these meant. Sweep felled plum florals, bath clean meant when there's plum flowers in winter, wait for the petals to fall, collect them and wash them clean. Take snow water and add in into the white kanji so they will boil together. Adong said, But it's not winter now. Where will we get winter plum blossoms? Tang Fan replied, One thing can refer to other things. It's not only plum blossom that can be added to kanji but things like acacia blossom or pear blossom can also be put into kanji and each will have its own effects. Adong blinked and asked, What does plum blossom kanji taste like though? Is it like eating a mouthful of petals? Tang Fan. You're no fun. But fine. Let's look for something else. Hmm. How about this one? This dish is called acacia leaf cold noodles. You need to specifically pick leaves from high up on an acacia tree, then beat them to extract their juice. Pour the juice into the flour and roll the dough into thin noodles. After cooking the noodles, toss them into cold water to steep to turn them into cold noodles. Afterwards mince the garlic and mix it with vinegar and sesame oil. Pour the mixture over the cold noodles. Say, isn't there an acacia tree behind the house? It's summer right now so how about we try this next time? Adong drooled at the idea. This sounds like it's going to be delicious. That acacia tree isn't very tall either. I'll try it tomorrow. That won't do, Tang Fan said righteously. What will we do if you fall? I'm better suited for that. I'll do the leaf picking. Huh? Gee, can you climb trees? Of course. I was an active child, jumping all over the place, climbing trees, and down at the rivers. What, you don't believe me? Adong looked him up and down then shook her head. Tang Fan rolled up his sleeves and said, You don't believe me, so I'll show you. I'll climb up that tree now. It's still early, too. When I picked up the leaves, we'll have this cold noodle dish for dinner. But I've already put the rice in the pot, protested Adong. And you shouldn't do that. What if you fell down? You'll get scolded by Brother Sui. Tang Fan said, don't worry. He's still reading the files in the study. He won't mind us for a while. After saying this, he turned around and saw the very man standing behind him. Tang Fan chuckled uneasily and said, Brother Guang Chuan, how come you're already done reading? Sui Zhou nodded and replied, I heard that Master Tang is climbing a tree, so I came to watch. Tang Fan scoffed, what's so great about climbing a tree? I'm doing it so we can all eat something nice. Don't you want to try it? Sui Zhou facial expression was placid as he said, who was it that said he was going to make boxy a gong and insisted that I get a rabbit? You fiddled with it for a while following that so-called ancient recipe and pounded the meat for a while. 
the result was that the meat was sour and astringent. I couldn't even chew the thing. Tang Fan silently wiped a sweat off, that was an accident. I forgot to marinate it with wine first. Sui Jo continued, then who was it who volunteered to make bamboo shoot stew last time and ended up with a pot of boiled paste? Tang Fan. Ah Dong's head poked out from behind, betraying him without mercy, it's gig. Master Tang could not lift his head after such scolding. Sui Jo continued to enumerate his kitchen crimes then proceeded to escort him away from the room. For all those reasons, your responsibility should be limited to just eating. It's not appropriate for you to enter a place like the kitchen. With that final blow, Master Tang had been bestowed the rice bucket crown henceforth. The expressionless Sui Jo continued lecturing him as they walked. From now on, when Ah Dong is cooking, you should not go in and disturb her. Master Tang knew that he was in the wrong and thus, readily accepted the chiding, yes, yes, yes. Sui Jo had more to say, Ah Dong can cook whatever dish she knew. Don't try and give her a hard time to try those weird recipes you come across to experiment with. If you want to eat something fancy, you can go and eat in the restaurants outside. Master Tang nodded his head as if he was pounding garlic, yes, yes, yes. Sui Jo was not done yet, also, you have to eat less at night. Occasionally eating evening snack is self-indulgent but you shouldn't do that every day. There was one time when Ah Dong said she found pastry crumbs under your desk when she was cleaning your room. She thought there were rats roaming about. Yes, yes, yes. Master Tang was quite exasperated. I used to live like this when I was alone. I have adopted a younger sister and earned a good friend and yet, why does it feel as if I found two mothers for myself instead? After some time living under the same roof as Sui Jo, Tang Fan discovered that the other man was leading such a simple life that some would even describe it as boring. During their usual working hours, Sui Jo and Tang Fan spent more or less the same amount of time outside and they came back at different times in the evening. However, they still managed to have dinner together most of the time. After dinner, they would chat for a while then return to their respective rooms to read. Sometimes they would play Go and other such games. Sui Jo was not very good at Go as he would basically lose every time with Tang Fan wiping the floor with him. More often than not, the Northern Administrative Court had endless work to do, endless files to read, endless criminals to catch, endless secrets to investigate, and thus, Sui Jo was even busier than Tang Fan, who have to take care of things inside the palace, as well as outside of it. In Sui Jo's position, it was not uncommon for him to be out for the whole night. Sui Jo was rigid and solemn by nature and was not like others who like to dine, wine, go to brothels and gambling even once in a while. His life trajectory was even simpler than that of Tang Fan's. He was unlike any normal son of the gentry at all. Master Tang felt that as a friend, it is his obligation to change Sui Jo's boring lifestyle. Therefore, during his spare time, he would think up of some ideas in the hope of enriching Sui Jo's life outside of work. Like right now, for example. Come on, brother Guang Chuan. These are all the books I've kept for years. Read them when you have time. You should not limit your reading material to those of official documents. It will make you age faster. One's work is important but you should also have a life outside of it, right? Tang Fan said with a smile as he piled book after book at the man's writing table. After spending some time in the company of Master Tang, Sui Jo had personally experienced the random eccentricities beneath the man's refined countenance. Hearing what he said, Sui Jo had not choice but to put his brush down, then look through the books he had brought somewhat helplessly. Collected Treasures, A Flower's Tale, Ying Ying's Biography, The Western Journey, A Story Told of King Wu of Zhou, The Golden Jade Marriage, A Record of Passions. I have read all these before. You've read them all before. Tang Fan was greatly amazed. One should truly not judge a book by its cover. He couldn't tell at all. Sui Jo replied, some time ago, 
the White Lotus Society disciples were using books to spread their teachings, filling the people's mind with lies so the Northern Administrative Court needed to thoroughly check the books being sold on the market to prevent the society from using the fame of those books to incite a rebellion. As he talked, he came across the book at the very bottom of the pile. He pulled it out and asked, What is this book about, Pear Blossom Fate? Master Tang winced in embarrassment for a moment and then said, I wrote that one. Suijo. Chapter End The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua Chapter 28 The Writing on the Wall Suijo really didn't know what expression to use to face Tang Fan after having that knowledge. It was said that Tang Fan possessed the talent of the Imperial Exam Prime Scorer even if he ultimately didn't get the position. Still, he had taken the fourth place amongst the whole country and was even praised by His Majesty himself. If he wrote about subjects like interpretations of Analects or a new understanding of Zuzi, it would be considered as him applying his hard-earned knowledge. So, what was he thinking by writing a romantic novel? On the contrary, Tang Fan beamed and didn't seem to be ashamed at all. In fact, he looked rather proud as he stated, my salary is low so I have to earn a bit of money from doing literary works. You don't need to be so surprised brother Guang Chuan. No one even knows that I wrote it except you. This book has been printed for a thousand copies by the bookseller, it sold very well. Sui Zhou interest was thoroughly piqued so he pulled out that book alone and said, I'll read this. That's great. Since you've taken my book, there's something I need to trouble you about. Sui Zhou raised his eyebrows in suspicion. Tang Fan felt that if the other party accepted his book, he could also trouble the other party to do one small thing. How about you help me to pick those acacia leaves outside? Sui Zhou. Did he think that this was an exchange of favors? They've already been through this but it didn't seem as if he had given up on trying those cold noodles. This man really loved food. Master Tang Fan wasn't thinking in that sense, of course. He believed that someone with such a rich life and interest like himself was destined to save this piece of wood called Sui Zhou. Just look, ever since he involved himself with Sui Zhou, the man's life had been filled with sunshine. But in the end, he didn't get to eat that acacia leaves cold noodles, either. That's because Sui Zhou took the two of them directly to the outside restaurant for a meal. Such cold noodle dish was not available but there was steamed shrimp. The shrimp were freshly caught from the river. They were not as tasty as the shrimp from the sea but it was alright. Dipping a peeled shrimp in the sauce made of combining soy sauce, sesame oil, and chopped garlic was a real treat. Eating with satisfaction, Tang Fan couldn't help but felt really blessed. Brother Guang Chuan, look at this hustle and bustle. Being able to steal an ephemeral moment of relaxation in life, eating and watching the world go by, that's leisure and enjoyment. It's something you should sit down on and slowly appreciate. This Tang Fan was well-bred but was unlike the usual honest official who were quite uptight and hard to get along with. He also did not resemble most men in the world who aspired for golden homes or abundance of wealth. He wasn't even grasping for powers nor wanted to wake up in the laps of beautiful women. There was a wisp of a smile in Sui Zhou's cold eyes. He shook his head and said, Even on my day off, I usually stay in the Northern Administrative Court reading dossiers and rarely go out. With me getting promoted to Beihu at my age, if I didn't work harder, others might think that I was promoted because of nepotism. Tang Fan strongly said, Other people can think how they like that's their business. There's no way we can stop people from talking as they like. As long as our conscience are clear, all is good. We are entitled to enjoy the things we like. That was rather reasonable. As Sui Zhou was about to say something, he heard Master Tang said something quite unreasonable, well then, let's go ask the shopkeeper to pack a couple of cold dishes to take back. We'll be back just in time for dinner tonight. Sui Zhou looked at him with an expressionless face. Tang Fan blinked and asked, That's fine, right? Ah Dong could not keep herself from laughing as she covered her mouth. 
With the addition of one Suizhou and one Adong in his life, Tang Fan thought that it would be leading to a fulfilling happy life. He did not expect that the result would be him ending up with two mothers who would take control of everything in his life especially with regards to his food. That control meant that he was forced to merely gaze at these morsels with a sigh. But generally speaking, a life like this was quite good. There were a couple of people waiting for you at home every day, have meals with, saw the smile of and have conversations with. His real elder sister had been married off and lived far away. Having two additional family members was a completely different feeling. For Adong, she used to be a member of the Li family. Despite of Lady Zhang being nice to her and Chun Ji's willingness to look after her, she had still been a servant where a comfortable life was not meant for her. A gap existed between superior and inferior so no matter how unfettered she was, she still had to observe proper decorum. That was why she likes running off to Master Tang's place. Having now acknowledged him as her elder brother, her feelings of finally having her own family was similarly hard to describe. When she had just moved into Suizhou's residence, the young lady had been so excited that she didn't sleep well for the first several days. It was not just the two of them though, Suizhou felt the same way although he did not explicitly say anything. However, he had been coming back home more often than before nowadays and doing so earlier and earlier. He no longer spent his rest days in the Northern Administrative Court Division. He was probably having the same thoughts as Tang Fan. Even so, tracking the location of Lady Chen was not going well. If she was by herself alone, she certainly wouldn't be able to get far due to strict questioning at the city gates and the requirements of travel documents to come in and go out of the city. If she was indeed with the White Lotus Society just like Tang Fan had guessed, then it won't be difficult for her to get out of the city under the protection of the organization. Once she's out of the city, it would be like a fish entering the ocean, the world was quite vast out there. With the power of the Jinyue, they searched for several days and found no trace of Lady Chen within the city. It was as if the woman had completely vanished into the sea of people. On the day of the crime, Tang Fan could have taken Lady Chen into custody as well. But at that time, he already noticed something strange about the woman, so he tried to catch her with a long line to see if she had any other accomplices or hidden tricks. Who knew this woman could be so cunning? While everyone thinks she was not too important and the bailiffs were only keeping an eye at a distance, she had already flee without leaving a trail. Meanwhile, the day before Li Man was to be transferred from the Wanping County prisons to the prison of the Ministry of Justice, Something even more bizarre happened. Li Man was found dead. He committed suicide. After Li Man had smashed the bowl used for serving food in the prison, he purposely hidden a broken fragment. Then in the dead of the night, he used that fragment to stab right into his own chest. He died from excessive blood loss from such mortal wound and was already dead by the time he was found. And on the wall beside his body, written with the blood of his heart, Two words were written. Tang Fan. Those bloody characters were truly frightening as they were reflected in the blank, opened wide eyes of the corpse. The scene greatly shocked the guards who screamed in horror when they first found it. There had been inmates who committed suicide because they could not stand the torture in prison but throughout the ages, the living would prefer to cling to life. Even those who were sentenced to death would rather have their heads chopped off by a knife until the last moment instead of having the courage to end their lives themselves. Besides, for a prisoner like Li Man, the Ministry of Justice have not finalized the verdict yet so there was still a chance of a reversal with the prisoner may have been sentenced to military conscription and exiled instead of being executed. By the time Tang Fan had received the news and went to check out the scene, Li Man's corpse was no longer there. The prison cell he had been kept in was dark and damp. It was difficult to see what was inside even by candlelight during daytime. The two words written in blood had solidified and discolored though one could still read the characters written. Li Man deserved to be punished for his crime. Tang Fan directly revealed his murderous motive and thoughts. It was not surprising that he hated Tang Fan, but could this hatred be so great that he still remembered to write Tang Fan's name on the wall before he died? 
even without Tang Fan, the fact that he murdered his wife could have been uncovered by somebody else. Also, when Li Man was dying, he wasn't thinking about his only son, nor his wealth, nor his wish to survive but only of his hatred of Tang Fan. Looking at these characters, Tang Fan feels that there were still many mysteries lingering about, as well as a bunch of puzzles waiting to be solved. He rushed to the Li residence again. After the coroner examined Li Man's body, the Li family took the corpse back and were preparing it for a coffin burial. The deceased were to be respected. Even the rebels were allowed to collect the dead bodies of their people, what more of Li Man who had merely killed his wife. The Li family did not happily welcome Tang Fan, especially Li Lin. As soon as he saw him, his facial expression turned extremely unsightly and he immediately went to chase him out. This official is simply here to take a look and will leave once I'm done, Tang Fan said. Li Lin sneered and said, what's the point? My father is dead and you won't even let go of his body? I've heard that he wrote your name on the wall before he died. I haven't asked Master Tang, what did you have to do with my father's death? I have no enmity towards you and your Li family. What do I have to do anything with his death? Countered Tan Fan. Li Lin said, that is indeed difficult to explain. Who doesn't know that Asya was in love with you before? With her ending up like that, you wanting to avenge her is not an impossibility. Since my father was already in prison, you can very well do whatever you want. Tang Fan didn't bother to defend himself and instead said, Li Man's crime and punishment were in accordance to the national law. As an official of the court, it is my duty to come and check the situation now that he is dead. Li Lin refused to budge and declared, My father is already in the coffin and will be buried in a few days. No one is allowed to disturb him. There's no law that state that the dead can receive punishment. Tang Fan simply raised his hand and the bailiffs to his left and right stepped forward, pushing Li Lin and the rest away. Tang Fan moved past the crowd and had Lao Wang open the coffin's lid. A pale, bloodless face was revealed and the body had been changed with a new set of robes. But it was indeed Li Man, there was no doubt it. While Tang Fan was silently pondering things, Li Lin rushed forward and pushed Lao Wang away from the coffin and looked at Tang Fan with anger, have you seen enough, my father doesn't want to see you, get lost. He was but a commoner, yet he dared to be so rude to the court officials. Lao Wang and others were so angry that they were about to step forward to rebuke him but Tang Fan stopped them. The Li family had planned to move their family south, but now that Li Man was dead, they simply decorated the hall as a funeral hall to offer incense to the family members and guests that came to offer condolences. However, since Li Man had murdered his wife, there was no way that Lady Zhang's family would be coming and thus, the place looked deserted. Li Lin who was in his mourning clothes appeared all the more bitterly lonesome with no one to depend on. If anyone was here and saw the confrontation between the two sides, they would have thought that Tang Fan was using his status to bully Li Lin. Tang Fan didn't say anything. He merely walked around the coffin to light an incense stick himself for Li Man. The dead are to be venerated. Then he turned to Li Lin and said, I will leave but I hope you don't make the same mistake your father did. I hope that you would take your deceased mother's dignity into consideration. Study well, behave properly, and be a decent person unlike your father. Presumably, he wants you to succeed in life. Li Lin stared at him coldly and said, that's none of your concern, sir. Ever since the death of his legal mother, his voice had become deep and hoarse. He had probably cried so much in private that he almost lost his voice. Tang Fan frowned, only feeling that the boy had changed so much since the death of his parents. Although he had not seen Li Lin many times before, he had certainly never been as unreasonable and unkind as he was today. Not even a bit close. Perhaps the deaths of Lady Zhang and Li Man were a great shock to him. Seeing that Li Lin was so unwelcoming to him, Tang Fan didn't linger much and left the Li residence soon after. However, the matter was not yet finished. On the night Tang Fan came to the Li residence, the Li family house had caught a fire. 
Li Lin and the other servants of the Li family escaped but Lao Li, the steward, missed the chance to escape because he had to protect Li Man's body and was burned to death inside. The two bloody letters written by Li Man in prison before his death cast a veil of mystery over the whole incident. A few days later, Tang Fan was impeached. The person who impeached Tang Fan was the right assistant official of the criminal division, called Zhou Xing. The criminal division was not under the Ministry of Justice. In the Great Ming Dynasty, in addition to the six ministries, there was also a department called the Six Boards. The officials there were either true seventh rank or the normal seventh rank officials, which was a very low ranking and not comparable to the six ministries. Even so, they had a collective name, the Board of Censors. The six boards was set up by the Emperor Taizhu. These people were supposed to monitor the government officials and to impeach them should they be caught committing abuse of power or committing illegal acts. They were bestowed with enormous privileges that even the cabinet couldn't keep their memorials away. However, in order to counterbalance them and prevent them from misusing those privileges, they were kept in the lowest possible ranks. Li Man had previously threatened Tang Fan that his ancestor was a third-rank assistant minister and that he had old friends who were currently members of the court. Those words were not empty threat because Zhou Xing's father had once had a friendship with Li Man's grandfather. That had been purely affection for the older generation though and the relationship with Li Man had become shallow. Otherwise, there would have been someone who could speak up on his defense when he went to prison. Even so, there was still lingering feelings for the dead. With the evidence against Li Man having been conclusive, Zhou Xin could not defend him when the Ministry of Justice was hearing his case for the final verdict. Now that Li Man was dead and he had written Tang Fan's name before he died, there were reasons for speculations. Due to that, Zhou Jing presented a memorial accusing Tang Fan of making a mistake when investigating the case as he believed that Tang Fan would not be able to defend himself against the skepticism from Li Man suddenly dying before the verdict. In the Ming Dynasty, anyone who did not have a few impeachment memorials on their back would be ashamed to call themselves government officials whenever they are in public. Since Li Man's suicide was indeed a bit suspicious, Tang Fan just temporarily stepped down from his post to avoid scrutiny and patiently await further developments. He didn't think much of it. Pan Ben on the other hand, was furious. Although Master Pan did not go out of his way to put in good words for this junior disciple brother of his, he still considered him as one of his own and would not accept it if someone bullied him with no real reason. Although Pan Bin had no choice but to give in to the likes of Wang Ji and the Marquis of Wuhan, that was in deference to their standing and difference of authorities, when it came to facing off against his colleagues and fellow civil officials though, he wouldn't be so polite. Everyone has a couple connections nowadays. If you have them, I sure do, too. Thus, Master Pan unleashed those connections in rage. Soon after, another censor file a counter-impeachment memorial against Zhou Xin for misusing his position. He knew well that the evidence against Li Man was concrete and irrefutable yet he was trying to overturn the case for him. Just how much bribe did he receive from the Li family for him to allow the merchant family to slander a court official? The arguments between the two sides grew heated and heated. Meanwhile, Tang Fan, the one who was actually implicated was sitting at home by himself and reflecting on the situation. Why did Li Man needlessly commit suicide in prison? Why did he write his name before he died? Why did the Li family house suddenly catch fire for yet another corpse to be accidentally burned? In connection to that, wasn't Lao Li's death suspicious? Setting up his writing implements on top of the table, Tang Fan wrote several names on the ink and paper. Li Man, Li Lin, Lady Zhang, Lady Chen, Asya. It was late, and Sui Zhou had not returned yet. He was probably got delayed with the Northern Administrative Court works again. Ah Dong had already prepared all the meals and had put them in a pot to keep them warm. She and Tang Fan sat in the backyard to bask in the early evening chill while waiting for Sui Zhou to return for dinner. Propping her chin up, A Dong looked curiously at the words Tang Fan had written down. As she was still small, her legs did not reach the floor, 
so she was swinging them in the air. Gah, how do you read these words? One by one, Tang Fan pointed the character to her and read them as he did. Afterward, he gave her a piece of paper and writing brush then let the girl scribble the characters herself while he was gathering his thoughts. Lady Zhang was dead, and in this case, she was the initial victim. Li Man's reason for killing her was quite simple, he had fallen out of love with her a long time ago and found her to be an eyesore. Since Lady Zhang refused to give him divorce, he resorted to harming her. Asya was currently in prison. Tang Fan had already questioned her. She didn't know anything from the beginning to the end. She was merely an unfortunate person who was exploited by Li Man. There were three others left, no, four. Tang Fan realized that he had overlooked the steward, Lao Li. Li Man committed suicide in prison and wrote his name before he died. Then the Li family's house caught fire while Li Man's corpse was inside and Lao Li did not manage to escape from it. After burying Lao Li and Li Man, the Li family hastily left the capital and moved south as they had said before. Li Man had just died and then the Li family house caught fire, that was too much of a coincidence. Or perhaps. What if Li Man didn't die at all? What if someone else had died on his instead? That would mean he had to destroy the corpse and destroy the evidence completely to avoid being detected later on. The possibility of that actually existed because Li Man was being held in Wanping County Prison. Despite the case's importance, there were still many opportunities for Li Man to do his dirty works. There was no guarantee that the prison guard won't be willing to help him out if they were bribed heftily enough. Tang couldn't figure out the trick though. When he went to the Li family that day, he clearly saw Li Man's corpse, so he could not have been lying there pretending to be dead. It was also necessary to note that the corpse would be examined by the coroner before it could be released from prison. Could he have bought off the coroner, too? No. Wait. Wait. He felt like he was missing something important. He turned to Adong and asked, how was the young master Li usually like? Adong tilted her head and said, the young master is not very talkative and very shy but he is good to us. I don't see him very often because the young master spends his days in his room studying. He has his own maid, too. Tang Fan asked again, how was he towards the madam? Very filial. The young master was raised up by the madam since he was very little. Compared to master who only comes back a few times a year. The young master was respectful and feared him. Tang Fan stood up then paced around the courtyard with his hands behind his back. He was filial, shy, and not very talkative. Right, that was the impression he himself have of Li Lin before all of this happened. Tang Fan still remembers that after Li Man was taken away, he went to talk to Li Lin about buying off A Dong's slave contract. The teen had been guarded and have a hateful attitude towards him. In addition, there were dozens strong words that he had said to him. At that time, he thought that Li Lin's personality had changed due to the misfortune that his family had suffered but now, he was seeing things in a different light. He suddenly turned back and asked Ah Dong, do you think that Li Lin and Li Man look very much alike? Ah Dong nodded and said, very much so. The madam always says that the young master and the master seem to have come from the same mold. Even though she has left the Li family, Ah Dong was still addressing them as before. Tang Fan didn't ask her anything again but instead picked up the pace at his feet. That's right. That's exactly right. He should have looked at things from another angle to begin with. Suppose that from the time Li Man was taken away to the time Tang Fan met Li Lin at the Li family residence, Li Man and his son Li Lin had already switched identities. When Li Lin went to visit his father in the prison, he could have persuaded his son to take his place in the prison, coaxing him that he himself would go out so he could find a way to suppress the case. With Li Lin's timid and shy nature, it would have been impossible for him to oppose his father's idea. At that point, were he to bribe the guard to open the prison door due to some false pretext like father and son wanting to have some private moments together, the prison guard would have agreed for sure. At that the time, the Li Lin who had done visiting his father was actually Li Man. 
Since the father and son had similar statures and looks, Li Man would only need to tweak his disguise a little bit and deliberately imitated his son's voice. The servants would not dare say anything even if they had their doubts. The only one who could question things was most likely the devoted steward, Lauli. Lauli had probably found out that Li Man's father and son had switched positions, and with his loyal character, he would definitely urge Li Man to stop doing these things. Afraid that the old steward would disclose something, he resorted to burning both Li Lin's corpse and Lao Li together in order to get rid of the evidence of his deceit. As for the cause of Li Lin's death, there were still some doubts about it. However, in consideration of the thoughts that he had gone through, everything did point to suicide. With filial piety at the top of his head, the cowardly Li Lin was forced to comply with his father's request for an exchange of identities. However, the death of his legal mother and his father's cold-bloodedness about it, Li Lin must have been under painful struggles in his heart. Everything that was happening was conflicting with the books of wise men that had been diligently studying before. These contradicting feelings and thoughts must have brought the young man incomparable confusion that he ultimately chose to commit suicide to escape it all. But as he was dying, he was still worried about his mother's death and his father's cruelty, so he wrote Tang Fan's name on the wall, not to blame him but rather to give him a hint in the hopes that he would be able to connect things together. In this way, everything made sense. Having thought things up to this point, Tang Fan's breath became quicker. It was not because he was excited but because having figured everything out, he couldn't help but felt that Li Man was really a terrible human being. For an uncomplicated matricide case to end up like this. From the moment Li Man killed his wife, he must have prepared two plans. If he could bribe the officials to tone down the case, then that would be the best. If that didn't work, then he would go ahead with the plan to replace himself with his son then ultimately make his escape. The Li family moved south two days ago, Tang Fan was sure that even if he sent people to go after them, they would only be able to track down the scattered servants of the Li family. As for Li Man who was pretending to be his son, he had definitely long since carried the Li family assets to somewhere unknown. Combined with the disappearance of Lady Chen earlier, it really did seem that the White Lotus Society was involved in this matter. Gig. Gig. His sleeve was shaken a few times. Tang Fan snapped back to his senses to see A Dong watching him with an inscrutable look. What is it? Gig what are you thinking about? I had been calling you all this time but you are not reacting at all. It scared me to death. The little girl patted her heart and pointed to Sui Zhou who had just come in from outside. Brother Sui is here. I'll get dinner ready. Tang Fan had a frown on his face when he said, Brother Guang Chuan, about the Li family's case, there's something that I must tell you. I'm afraid I would need to trouble the Northern Administrative Court Division again. Sui Zhou nodded and said, let's eat first. Ah Dong jumped out of the kitchen with the dishes and said, yes, yes, let's eat first. I'm starving to death. Sui Zhou patted Tang Fan on the arm, we'll talk after dinner. The words were simple and his speech was bland but coming from him, one couldn't help but put their trust in him. Tang Fan did not notice how his expression visibly relaxed. He nodded and smiled at Sui Zhou. Thanks to Ah Dong. Today, I will finally get to eat the acacia leaves cold noodles that I have been craving for in ages. How dare you say that, Ge? Ah Dong shouted. You ran off to climb that tree and almost fell off it? I almost broke my bone trying to catch you. Sui Zhou. He thought that after taking him to dine outside that day, Tang Fan would have abandoned the notion of making this dish. Who would have known that Master Tang would take the opportunity of his impeachment to climb that tree and pick those leaves? Sui Zhou have finally seen how deep Tang Fan's obsession with food was. Chapter End